guys, it's Robin, R. S. Island Crafts, and welcome to my craft room. Today, I want to show you how to make a fabric, a Polaroid block. Now, way back when, when I was a young lady, we used to have actual Polaroid cameras that we would take our pictures with. You know, you'd have to sit there and shake it for a while and wait for it to develop, and then you would see your little picture. Now, of course, I know nowadays they have brought back the Polaroid camera. They're a lot different, a lot smaller, I believe, and it basically does the same thing for you. But to bring back that old fun, I thought I would show you how to make those pictures out of fabric. Now, this isn't anything new. This is something that I actually swapped these over on Flickr back in um, 2009, 2005, 2011. At least 10 years ago, we were making these before, but I haven't made any in a long time. And after seeing them on Flickr again and going back through old photos, I thought, well, that sounds like something fun to do. It's like a nice little rainy day project when we're stuck here at home looking for something to do. Since many times it's hard to get out to the store right now, since we are doing, we're practicing our, our social isolation, you can order things online, but it does take a lot longer. So let's find a way to use what we have in our house right now to keep ourselves busy and to have a little fun. You can make these as standalone projects just like this and swap them with your friends, or you can make enough to make a wall hanging, a quilt, a pillow, just about anything you want. I'm gonna use some of these in some tote bags and zipper pouches, and definitely in some pillows. So I had a little fun playing this week, just making a variety of these. I'm gonna show you a few different ways to make them. You can make these your own and make them any size you want, but I'm gonna show you how to make these here particularly, and they are three and a half inches wide by four inches tall. There's a few different tutorials online where they use a variety of sizes. I've seen them this size and I've seen them much larger. What I did is I started out with a two and a half inch square of scrappy fabric. You can cut it from yardage or use some of your jelly rolls or anything that you might happen to have in your stash. You can use charm squares. Anywhere you can get a two and a half inch square, you can use that. Now, if you wanna use something a little bit larger, maybe you have some type of uh, the Tula Pink fabrics that has some really nice large designs, you can make your center square instead of two and a half inches, you can go ahead and make it six inches if you want, and you're just gonna to have to adjust your border around it based on the size. So let me show you how to make this one with the two and a half inch squares. So I went through my stash and I went through my scraps and my novelty fabrics. I grabbed out yardage. I grabbed out two and a half inch strips that were already cut, as I mentioned. And I just cut a whole bunch of two and a half inch squares and stuck them in my little container here. That way I can easily just pick through it and grab whatever I want. And it's, it's one of those, you can just chain piece it or you can do it one by one or you can do a different form that I'm gonna show you. Now to get my squares, I have an OmniGrid little two and a half inch uh, rotary cutting ruler. Then I just went ahead and I laid it down onto my fabric, found my design and fussy cut around it. You can, if you want, just use something that's more of a semi-solid that doesn't have an actual main fabric design in it. I have plenty of these that I could choose from. I have some all over flowers and some green, or you can go ahead and fussy cut. I have these John Deere prints that I fussy cut. I have this a little gardening one with a trellis and a ladybug and a sunflowers, some more tractors. You can have some with little designs that are all over the place, and yet it's not a semi-solid or anything. This, this has got little ladybugs all over in different colors. I've got a puppy dog in a cage. This is from a border print fabric, and it was, it's something about it's so cold outside and it has little mittens, so I can use that as my centerpiece. You can just use solids. This would be really great using batiks. But what I did to get the fussy cut ones is as I said, I just used my square. If you don't have one of those and you really wanna look at the fabric, you can go ahead and make yourself a little template. This just happened to come out looking like a Polaroid block because this is just a waste cardboard I had. I took my two and a half inch ruler and I just traced around it and I cut out the center so that I can use this as a viewfinder. So to use your little template, you just grab out your fabric, your novelty or anything that you happen to have. Like I said, your tulip pink. Maybe you have some wild and crazy K facet or something you like to use and you want something specific in the little picture. So you can just lay your little frame down and see where things are gonna lay. Maybe you might be able to get a couple things out of it. Maybe you just want one. 
So if we have this nice little ice skate here that we like, you can go ahead and lay that on there and just move it around a little. So let's say you didn't, you wanna make sure you have your seam allowance around here. So you don't wanna keep it up too close to the top. Just kind of get it in the center. We're gonna lose any of these extra bits here because as we sew our fabric around it, our borders for the outline of it, it's gonna go ahead and you're gonna lose a quarter inch all the way around there. And if a little bit shows up, it doesn't bother me too much. But you can always see if you can find something like this one, you're gonna have the gavel and the paintbrush and that works too. Then I would just take some type of a, maybe a mechanical pencil or a really, this is a friction marker pen. So this will come off with heat and I can just trace around the inside and then I can cut it out with scissors. And if I were to be using my little two and a half inch square ruler, I could just lay that on there. I can take my rotary cutter and cut around it. I can rough cut and then trim it up later. Or once again, I can still draw around it with a pen. Now you can use any color fabric to go around this. I chose white for most of mine for the novelties like this, but I also wanted to show you that you can stick with white with your solids or you can highlight a color that's in the fabric. These puppy prints have some purple in it, so I went ahead and used a semi-solid purple. If you have a lot of white in your fabric, maybe you wanna border it. This is in a light, this blue has like paint stripes on it to make it look all swirly. I like the way the pink draws out the little candy that's on the stick here, so you can choose to do that. Or you can just go ahead and border all of them in a black and that's going to make any of your colors pop as long as maybe you're not putting a black fabric on the inside now this one you can still see that pink but it will kind of make that blend a little bit more just like if i used the white fabric and i had a white square now this square on my main fabric on the inside has a lot of white to it, so you don't really get those sharp edges that actually looks like that Polaroid picture. So you wanna be a little bit careful about what you choose to put inside your framework there. But if you don't mind it getting lost just a little bit, you can go ahead and use any color you want. So I have my two and a half inch square. So the first way I'm gonna show you is I'm gonna show you how to cut your pieces out individually so that you can sew them on one at a time and put all of your pieces together. And then I'm gonna show you how to do it in a way that I like to do it when I'm chain piecing any types of scraps and to get it all done in one shot. That way I can work through it pretty quickly and I can just go ahead and chain piece and do one right after another. So it's really quick brainless sewing. So the first way I wanna show you to make your Polaroid block is if you don't wanna do a lot of trimming and you wanna cut everything exact. So what I did is I cut my two side pieces. These are one inches wide by two and a half inches long. When you're doing it this way, you have to put everything together in a specific order for everything to fit. My top piece is still one inches wide, but it is now three and a half inches long because I have to have these stitched together first and then that'll stitch onto there. And my bottom piece is one and a half inches wide by three and a half inches long. Now, when we stitch this together, we're gonna wanna stitch these two side pieces on first. I am using white thread, just so I don't want anything to show through my white border fabric here. So I find that using white thread is a little bit better. I am using a quarter inch seam allowance. And my machine, when I do a quarter inch seam allowance, it goes to a 2.0 on the stitch length, but you can go ahead and bump it up a little bit higher if that's what your machine uses. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch either the left or the right side on first. Right side's facing just like we stitch anything else. If you have something with a white on white print like mine, just make sure you have it the right sides together because sometimes they both look the same like batiks. But if you look at it, the one with the printing on it is a little bit shinier than the back side. So laying them right sides together, quarter inch. And then we're gonna wanna go ahead and give it a press at this stage. I go ahead and just press it to set my seams. Now for this first one, what I like to do is I like to go ahead and press it to the center 
And then on the next ones, I press it on the outside. You can press it any way you want. If you are worried about any type of shadowing, I can see a little bit of it back there, but I'm looking at the white instead of looking at any of the purple. So, so far I have been able to keep these pretty good where I can't see too much of anything through it and it works out really well. You will get a little shadowing in each of the spots. So if you wanna press them all in the same direction away from your center block, you can go ahead and do that. But I like to do it this way. It just seemed to make my blocks sit easier. So I'm just going to press it so that my white is on the back of my center square. I'm gonna lay my white border down. Just let it go over and give it a nice press. I do like to use steam on these. I am careful that I'm not dragging it all over and doing anything with any type of a bias. Trim up your threads a little if you'd like. Just get them out of the way. So the next part is I'm gonna go ahead and add the top on. If you have something that's directional, like our John Deere fabric, you wanna make sure that your widest strip is on the bottom and your narrows on the top. Because with your Polaroid blocks, when we were doing these back in the day on this wide strip down here, this is where we would write the information. You know, that's like a um, trip to the aquarium, 1992 or something like that. So that way we can have that information there. Because the back of the Polaroids were all black and you couldn't actually write on those. So I'm gonna put it across the top. This one, it's not gonna really matter. Now, since everything is cut exactly right, you just wanna make sure everything is lined up well so that you don't have anything short or nothing is in, you know, you're not gonna run short on fabric on either side. Line it up really well. I find that these are small enough that I don't have to pin them, but if you feel you need to have the comfort of a pin to keep everything lined up nicely, go ahead and pop a pin or two in. As I'm stitching, I just make sure that my seam allowances stay where I put them and they don't flip flop anywhere. Give it a nice little press. Now this one I'm gonna press from the front here and I'm gonna press it away so that it goes into the border. I've tried it a few different ways and it, for me this just seems to make everything lay nice and flat. So now we just have to add our bottom piece. Once again, it's all cut to be the perfect size. Lay them right sides together, sticking with my quarter inch foot, uh, Stick it with my quarter inch seam all the way through. Now, if you're really good with your quarter inch and everything is lined up nicely, your block is gonna go ahead and measure three and a half by four inches. I'm pressing this one away again. I find a little starch or just a little squirt from the water. If you have a little spray bottle, I know a lot of people don't put water into their iron. I do, I really like a lot of steam. I find that this just works really well. You can go ahead and have a dry iron and just use a little squirt bottle and squirt some water in there. And that's just gonna get everything to lay nice and flat the way we need it to. And there we go, there's our little Polaroid block. And it measures right at three and a half by four. So everything came out right. All my quarter inch seams were good. If for some reason your quarter inch seams aren't perfect, this is a good place to practice them because you're just really dealing with scraps. If you chose to make a quilt with this, you can use several different colors of white if you don't have enough white fabric to do an entire quilt, or you can go ahead and mix and match your colors so that you can truly use up all of your scraps. Maybe you can come up with some type of a little diagonal rainbow design or something. You can have fun and make it a lot of different ways. So this one came out fine just that way. I wanna show you the other way. Now this is the way I do it. I like to go ahead and just cut whatever type of white fabric with the fabric that I'm using. I cut a bunch at one inches and I cut half as many at one and a half inches wide because these are going, the narrower ones are going on three sides and this one is just going on the bottom. So I don't use as much. So I have my strip, this is my one inch strip. I have it right sides up. I have my two and a half inch square. I'm gonna put that right sides down. I'm gonna leave just a little bit of space on the top, maybe about a quarter inch. You can line it up right to the edge if you want, but I don't know if the edge of this is actually square. So I'm just gonna go down a little bit. I'm gonna put it under my presser foot, sticking with my quarter inch. I'm gonna go ahead and sew. 
And when my tip of my presser foot here hits the end of my two and a half inch square, I'm gonna go ahead and grab another square. Now I do wanna be careful when I'm using the ones that have a right side up. I wanna make sure when I'm putting this down the first time that I'm gonna go on one side or the other. I wanna make sure that I'm not putting it at the top or the bottom. It doesn't matter which side you put it on, just as long as it's the left or right. I like to leave a quarter to maybe a half an inch of the white fabric strip in between the two. Because sometimes when you're doing it in the way it cuts, if you put them, bunt them up right next to each other, it, it gets to where sometimes you're a little bit short or it gets cut a little crooked. So when you wanna leave a little bit of space in between the two of them. And I'll just keep continuing adding strips until I get to the end of this first strip making sure if my fabric needs to be orientated a specific way that I have it that way. I don't normally mind if things get a little crazy, but when I'm doing the Polaroid blocks, if they need to be right side up, I like to have them right side up instead of crooked or upside down, because it's a little bit more obvious on those that you've made a little bit of an oops. I like to stop at the end of the presser foot just so I have room to stick the next one under, and I don't have to like lift up the presser foot or move anything around. I like to just have it nice and easy. As you see, I am picking through because I don't want to have all the ones that have to be orientated a special way. So I'm just grabbing, specifically looking for that, but I am just grabbing whatever I want. This might help some of you who like to do everything a specific way. There's those quilts that you could put the pieces in a brown paper bag or a basket. You just fluff it all up and you stick your hand in and you pull it out and that's the fabric you have to work with. So since you already cut all your fabric and you know you're gonna use all of this in your project or your quilt, it might help you a little bit to just stick your hand in and grab and go. It's not as wild and crazy as using the brown paper bag because you do know you're gonna use everything in there, but at the same time, it helps your brain get used to reaching in and grabbing. Now I'm gonna have a little extra left over and that's fine. If it wasn't enough for the next one, I would just leave that any bit length left over and skip it if I didn't have enough length to it. Remember these are all two and a half inch strips that we're putting onto here. Now if I were doing a larger quilt, I would probably just go ahead and lay my next one down and lay these on top of it. But that doesn't give me too much room in between to put my iron. So I do like to lay it out. You could take this to your cutting mat and use your rotary cutter and a square, but I just take my scissors and just kind of cut in between them. Make sure that I'm not getting too close to either. I'm just trying to like split the distance, the difference. And that way I know that each of these blocks will have enough to go underneath it. You see how sometimes it gets a little like this. If you did get any wonkiness at all when you're sewing, having that little extra space in between will help you. Then I would just take all of these over to my pressing mat and I would go ahead and once again, set the seam. You can set the seam before you cut them into pieces if you like, and then just press them all to the center. Now you might be able to see that I have that little bit extra on both sides. I'm not gonna worry about trimming any of these yet. Even the ones that are really long like this, I'm gonna go ahead and leave that extra length of my white border on there. So then I come through, I'm just gonna take my next white strip once again, this is the one inch size. I'm gonna leave it right side up. I'm just gonna flip these over and line them up on this strip here, lining up the not a bordered side with the right hand side of the strip. I'm trying to line it up as perfectly as I can. If it's a little off, we can make small adjustments, but we don't wanna have it too far off. Then I just keep adding them through. Now I need to make sure I've already got the one side on, so I should be perfectly fine to just lay this down because I'm putting it on that opposite side. So you just wanna make sure you just don't get it turned in any of the other directions and you'll be good.
and there's my next strip that I'm ready to trim up and go ahead and iron. I like to flip it so that it's right sides down so I can see the actual colored fabric of the squares on top. That way I can easily see in between. If I put them this way, yes, I can see in between, but if it gets moved at all, I just don't wanna have any issues. So I'll leave it this way. If you want, you can take your rotary cutter and just gently and slowly go in between, but you want to be careful that your hand doesn't wobble. You can put a ruler on it, but I just tend to take my scissors and just clip on through nice and quick. So then we're going to go ahead and get these pressed. So I have everything all pressed nice and neat. Now at this point, when I have the two sides on, I'm gonna to wanna to go ahead and trim them up. Let's trim this guy up because he's nice and long. Of course, it's gonna be easier for you to trim at a table somewhere. I do not tra trim my blocks right here, but for ease of you guys to be able to see it, I normally take it over to my actual cutting table. I stand up and I cut everything, but I'm gonna go ahead and just give this a try here. Since we know that we started out with a two and a half inch square and we sewed these sides, but these sides are still perfectly fine. We haven't touched them at all. I like to line my ruler up on the left side with the two and a half inch mark. And then on the right side, I just go ahead and trim off any of that extra border stuff. Turn it around and I can line this side up on a two and a half inch line and go ahead and trim this. And now I know that I have this at two and a half inches wide, so I wanna go to add my next parts. So let me go ahead and trim up the rest of these. Once you have your sides all trimmed up, now we're gonna go ahead and put the top on. Now this is where we need to make sure we're paying attention again, because if we're doing one like this John Deere and we're putting it on the top, we need to pay attention to our orientation for that one. Make sure our fabric is a right side up. Sometimes I find looking through a, underneath a bright light will help me see where it's been printed on. Since the paint or ink or however you wanna look at it is on top of this fabric, usually when you look from the back, you can see that it's a little bit dull back there and it's a little bit more to the forefront. You can usually feel it too, so just keep an eye on that. In all reality, if you do it upside down and it's a white fabric, it's going to be white on the back and I don't think anyone's gonna notice that much, especially if you're putting it in a quilt with you know a 100 other little Polaroid blocks. So we're going to stitch the top on. As I said, we're using our one inch strip again. We're sticking with the narrow ones, sticking with our quarter inch, and we're just going to keep going. We can keep adding one right after another, leaving that, oh, about a three eighths half inch. As you get going, you kind of get used to seeing that certain little width that you know will work for you, and you can just kind of eyeball it. Now I save any little bits that come off the end like this. This one happens to be, this is less than three and a half inches, so I'm not gonna be able to use it for this project. But the Polaroids, I don't really want to piece any of my borders unless I come to a crisis situation and I absolutely have to in order to finish a project. I kind of like how it has, you do have, of course, the seams here, but I like how it looks like the actual Polaroid where you don't have the seams on in the top section or the bottom there. So I will cut this off and I will save it for another project. So I just bring in another strip. Seeing how this is seven inches, if I trim it up exactly here, I can cut these into the two three and a half inch lengths but I can easily just go ahead and use it on the sides for the two and a half inch and I won't have to worry about cutting them exactly. I'm just going ahead and chop that off wherever it is. And we're gonna go right back over to the pressing area and do the same exact thing that we did before. So this one I'm going to press just a little bit differently. As I showed you with the first block, I want to go ahead and press this one so it goes away from the block and that'll just allow everything because if we press it 
to where this is coming back we're gonna have that extra large bit of bulk right in this section here Got like five or six pieces of uh, fabric right there in that seam so when you go to quilt it and stuff you're gonna have this really large clumpy little lump there to go through but if I just go ahead and do it that way then it stays about the same consistency all the way around the block once again I can wait for trimming until I go ahead and put the wide bottom piece on just like we did before, we're gonna do it right sides together. I am putting it on the last side available here because there is no white on the bottom, so we know exactly where it's gonna go. It's not a very complicated block, so it's a great one for kids. They can help you picking out the fabric. They can draw around inside our little template or around your little two and a half inch cutter. You let the kids go ahead and poke around in the fabric and find the right spot. If they're old enough, and even the littler kids can usually draw around it. If you use a pen that goes away with the heat of an iron or an air dissolvable one, even if the little two or three year olds get a little crazy, that part of it will come off of the fabric. And if you're really worried about it, you can always turn your fabric over and let them trace it from the back side. An older child can cut it out with scissors and they can also do the sewing if you feel that they're confident enough to go ahead and use a sewing machine. I think some kids would be even happy enough to choose out of the pile which one they're gonna give you next to sew. It's not much excitement to us, but for the little kids, sometimes that just makes them very happy. Now everybody's had their little spritz of water, or as I said, you can use some type of a spray starch or anything like the best press that people like to use. So we have all of these blocks ready. Now we're gonna have to trim them up to size so we don't have any of these little straggly edges. Now we know our block is going to finish at three and a half inches, so I like to kind of line up you can line up right along these cut edges here so you have this side lined up. Then I just check to make sure that this one's at about three and a half inches. You can find a line along the bottom to line it up so you get that little square in there and just get everything nice. This is a rotating mat. You could of course spin everything around. I tend not to do that for whatever reason. So keep trimming them all up till you have your nice little squares. And there are our Polaroid blocks. It was a really easy way to stitch these together. Whether you choose to have them done one by one or you wanna go ahead and do it the way I did and stitch them all in a row, a little chain piecing. Now your next thing is just to figure out how you're gonna use these in a project. I'm going to make a bunch more and once I have a lot of them made, I will go ahead and decide what type of projects I'm gonna work on and show them to you. And remember, as I said, if you have more light fabrics, maybe you wanna put them on a darker background to have a bit more colorful project. Or if you just wanna use maybe batiks or something with your favorite color, you can have a variety of all different reds or blues or something on your quilt or on your table runner or wall hanger or however you're gonna make your project. Or you can use all the different colors of the rainbow. Maybe you just wanna use it as a sampler and make one out of every fabric that you have in your stash. Unless you have an extremely large stash, you could probably just make a quilt out of it and never use the same ones again. So I think what would be fun is to use just one print at a time in your quilt and go ahead and make an I Spy quilt out of it. Those are really fun for the kids to play with on picnics or in the playroom or just to have on their bed. Like I mentioned in the beginning, if you wanna use a different size square in it, you can go ahead and go up to, just try the different sizes and see how it looks. After a certain size, the borders on the side might be too small. I think this would probably work all the way up to maybe a three and a half, four inch square. After that, you might wanna go ahead and start making your sides a little wider. Remember everything here is one inch and this is one and a half. So if you're gonna use a six inch block and maybe you wanted to make these two inches or two and a half inches, you wanna go ahead and add a little extra to the bottom too. Make a test block. 
If you want to use a charm square in the center, go ahead and make one test block, cut each piece of fabric evenly so you're only making it for one block, and give it a try. See if using a two inch here and a two and a half or three inch here will give you the look that you like. So you can make this almost any size you want. So if you don't want to make a hundred of these for a quilt and you only want to make half that, go ahead and make the five inch square in the center. It's a great way to use up a charm square. So I hope you enjoyed making Polaroid blocks with me. And to my patrons, I'm hoping that we can go ahead and swap some of these sometime this summer, if not a little bit later into the winter. So go ahead and start thinking about the different fabrics you might use on the inside. I think we can even get away with shipping these internationally very inexpensively because you could probably put several of them in an envelope before it costs very much over a dollar or two to ship. They're very small and they're very thin and they're very lightweight. So I think these would be great for a swap. As I mentioned in the beginning, I have swapped these on Flickr and through blogs before. They are so much fun because we all have so many different fabrics. Even when you're like, Robin, I have that same fabric, but you might not have all of the other fabrics. We all shop differently and at different places and at different times in our life. So some of our stashes are new and some of them are quite old. So you have a variety of fabrics. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'd love to see any of your Polaroid blocks that you make. Go ahead and tag me over on Instagram. I hang out there every day. And if you want, you can go ahead and tag me on Facebook too. I don't go there very often, but if I'm tagged, I pop in and see what's going on. There is a link down below to the Flickr group for this YouTube channel. So you can put them on there and see what everyone else is doing. Once I get mine all lined up and photographed all pretty like, I'll be popping them up into my Flickr and putting them into our little Flickr YouTube group. So have fun and enjoy your next rainy day. Bye.